Chapter 2. Into Darkness. Ollie didn't want to fight, but he would if he had to. The thought of what these men had done to Nancy only fed his anger. But when he set himself to drive forwards, to punch his shoulder into the man's solar plexus, he realised it wasn't a man at all. The owner of the Grimm was a boy, like him. Older, yes, by maybe two or three years, but a boy nonetheless. He had fair hair, kind eyes, and a scar that ran from his left ear almost to his chin. Sorry, the boy said. Didn't have time to warn you to stand back. You okay? Good. Then let's go. Now. The boy spun away. Ollie, open-mouthed, was left staring at his retreating back. When he noticed Ollie wasn't following, the boy turned around. I said let's go. They'll be coming back, you know. Those men. It won't take them long to realise the noise they heard was only a distraction. When Ollie didn't react, the boy extended his hand. I'm Dodge, by the way, he said. Ollie, automatically, reached out with his own. I'm Ollie. I... But Ollie didn't have time to finish his sentence. Dodge gripped Ollie's hand and wrenched him through the doorway into the corridor. Who are you? Ollie panted as they ran. Where did you come from? Dodge glanced at him sideways. No time to explain, he puffed. They reached the corner and Dodge slowed and spread a hand across Ollie's chest. The older boy peeked around the bend. Clear, he said. Let's go. They seemed to be heading back the way Ollie had come. But Dodge took them down a turn off. Ollie hadn't realised he'd passed. Wait. Once again, Dodge pressed Ollie back. There was a junction ahead, and a man with a gun ran right across their path. He didn't see them. He was too busy listening to the voices crackling on the radio receiver. All clear, said Dodge, and he tried to pull Ollie along. This time, Ollie resisted. We have to go back, he said. Dodge stumbled to a standstill ahead of him. What? What are you talking about? Nancy, we, we have to go back. We have to make sure she's... To see if she's... Dodge checked quickly behind him. When he was sure there was nobody coming, he drew closer and placed a hand on Ollie's shoulder. That woman, he said, she was something to do with you. Ollie could feel the tears prickle his eyes. He nodded. Dodge winced. Was she your mum? Not my mum, Ollie managed to say. My friend. For half a moment, Dodge closed his eyes. He sighed. She was a policewoman, Ollie said. I think that's why she, why they... He shook his head to clear it. I have to go back, Ollie insisted. I'm not leaving her. I won't. Ollie, listen to me. Dodge stooped slightly, so that he and Ollie were roughly the same height. There's nothing we can do for her. Not now. But if there's a chance... There's no chance, Ollie. Do you hear me? There's no chance. I'm sorry. Ollie wriggled himself free of Dodge's grip. He could feel himself shaking his head, trying to deny what the older boy was telling him. She couldn't be dead. She just couldn't be. I was in the air conditioning duct, Dodge said. I saw everything. We've been keeping tabs on what's going on here, he added, when he noticed Ollie's confusion. Look, it's, it's complicated. I'll explain it all to you later. For the moment, we need to concentrate on getting out of here. Agreed. Ollie hesitated, but then he nodded. They took the next corner and the next. They passed from the labyrinth of corridors onto what Ollie guessed was the factory floor. And here there were plenty of places for them to hide. There were people shifting crates and manoeuvring forklifts. They were unarmed as far as Ollie could tell and focused on what they were doing. No one seemed particularly on the lookout for escaped prisoners or anything else. Dodge led them at a crouch between the stacks of pallets. As before, he seemed to know where he was going. There was a fire door in the far corner, and Ollie guessed they were making for that. What's in these boxes? Ollie whispered as they moved. Dodge frowned, as though he'd been wondering the same thing himself. To be honest, I'm not sure. They're not her usual type of shipment. Whose usual type of shipment? Maddie Sykes. She owns this place. Who's Maddie Sykes? Ollie was about to ask, but it was then that he spotted one of the guards. The workers hadn't been on the lookout because other people were, he realised, and now he'd spotted one, he saw several. People who weren't involved with any of the labour, but instead were standing around the central perimeter, facing out with weapons at the ready. Whatever was in these boxes, it was obviously precious. They waited until the guard closest turned his back, then dashed to the next point of cover. Who are these people? Ollie said. You said you were watching them. Why? And what do they want with me? What do they want with Nancy? Your friend was a cop, right? Dodge answered. Right, Ollie said, trying not to think about the tense Dodge had used. Was a cop, not is. What was she, on a task force or something? I... Ollie wasn't sure. All he knew was that Nancy had been a detective of some kind. Dodge didn't appear to notice that Ollie hadn't answered his question. As they trotted onwards, he pulled out a phone. An old iPhone, Ollie thought. 
but it seemed to have been modified in some way. So that from the lightning connector, there was an antenna attached. Doris thumbed a message and tucked the phone back into his pocket. Help's on the way, he said. Now we just need to get outside. Keeping low, they moved towards the fire door, only pausing as they crossed between the rows of pallets to check for guards. Right ahead. Almost there, Ollie. We just need to hope that fire door isn't... They reached the fire exit, and Dodge, without hesitating, shoved down on the metal bar. As soon as the door broke contact with the frame, the air was filled with a piercing electronic scream. Alarmed, Dodge finished, swallowing. Ollie turned and saw a guard spot them and raise his gun. Hey, stop! Go! Dodge shoved Ollie through the doorway before the guard could fire. They bundled outside, and Ollie had barely a moment to register it was daybreak. In his mind, it had still been dark outside. Instead, the sun was edging above the horizon, bringing with it a warm, candy-floss glow. They dashed across the factory yard, dodging another forklift truck as they ran. There was no one behind them, not yet, but as far as Ollie could tell, they were no better off out here than they had been inside. The factory was on the bank of the Thames, but all around the yard there was a fence that at least triple Ollie's height, barricading their access to the river. Stopping the fence was a roll of barbed wire. What now? He yelled in panic. Dodge led Ollie around a corner and pointed to a solid brick wall. That way. But we'll be trapped. Dodge gave Ollie a look then, though Ollie couldn't tell whether it was a grimace or a grin. They slid between the park lorry and the wall and pressed their backs against the brickwork. Ollie peeked out from behind the lorry's tyre. What now? He repeated, looking out across the yard. There were men some distance away, searching blindly, but heading steadily in their direction. We can't just sit and wait for them to... Ollie turned around and realised Dodge had vanished. Dodge? He hissed urgently. Dodge, where are you? He felt panic building from his stomach, and for a moment he thought he would be sick. But then a hand closed around his ankle, and Ollie, jerking, looked down. Dodge was peering up at him from a hole in the ground. Beside him, slid to one side, was a manhole cover. Are you coming? Dodge said. Or did you want to stay and play with your new friends? Ollie tried to peer past Dodge into the darkness below. He couldn't see much, but he could smell plenty. What's that stench? he said, wrinkling his nose. Is that a sewer? It is indeed, said Dodge, and that stench, my friend, is the smell of freedom. He inhaled deeply and gave Ollie a grin. Now, are you coming or not? Ollie looked again at the manhole and saw Dodge had already disappeared down the ladder inside. Taking a deep breath, and with one last glance at the early morning sky, Ollie followed him into the darkness. So thank you for listening. There'll be uh, another chapter available tomorrow. Um, so don't forget to click the link below to subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get yourselves a, a copy of the book, uh, maybe to read along, um, or if you want to order the next books in the series, The Haven Revolution and The Haven Deadfall, um, then uh, a lot of independent bookshops are, are delivering at the moment. A lot of them are hand delivering. Uh, so, so please try and support them if you can. Um, otherwise, the Amazon link is also down below uh, and you can order the books there. So thanks again and see you next time.